So earlier on today, I had a notification on my phone from eBay saying that my Snoopy watch has been delivered. We all know how big watches are, and Snoopy, I presume, is going to be a kid's watch, which is going to be smaller again. So I had a look in the hallway and I thought, where is it? There was two boxes out there, this box here, and also a box in the shape of windscreen wipers, because I'm expecting some windscreen wipers. And I thought, right, OK, well, where's my Snoopy watch? And then I said to the kids, did Royal Mail come today? Yeah, they delivered this here. And I was like, oh, right, OK, because I'm expecting loads of deliveries of different stuff at the moment. And I was like, anything else? And they were like, yeah, yeah, these, these letters over here. OK, look through there, no Snoopy watch. I thought, what on earth is going on? Then I had a look in the letterbox, thinking it might have got stuck. Then I thought, has it dropped? Maybe it's in the bush or something. Maybe they've hidden it elsewhere. Looking around my garden, couldn't find anything. And I thought, what on earth is going on here? Where is this Snoopy watch? And then I thought, surely, surely a box this big can't contain a tiny watch. And I opened it up and I thought to myself, oh, well, what's in here? And it gets even stranger because in here, I looked at this and I thought, this doesn't look very modern. Thank you and goodbye. After 168 years, we finally say a sad but very proud farewell to our 7.5 million loyal readers. This is from July 2011, and it's like a special edition, the last news of the world ever. Why would you use that as packaging? It doesn't make any sense. And it gets even weirder. So after all the contents of that paper has been gone, even though it was kept for nine years, we then have something else in here. I thought, this doesn't look very modern. And then as I started to look closer, I find out that we have a West Bromwich Albion uh, program from... I mean, look. Look at that. Well, there we go. 1982 to 1983. Why would you keep a program for all those years and then wrap up something on eBay? This program and paper is probably worth more than the Snoopy watch. There it is. So I don't know the date of this yet. I think it's from the 1970s, but I'll look into that a little bit later. Let's just see if it is doing anything at all. So let's give it a little wind. Okay, it's definitely winding. But that second hand isn't moving. Let's give it a bit more of a wind. Right, it's wound full now, and it's, uh, it's not doing anything. So I can't turn that anymore. I quite like it. Nice colours. And obviously the hands of Snoopy are the hands of the watch. Right, let's, uh, let's take it apart and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. So I'm just going to zoom in to see what it says on this bottom bit here. Copyright 1958 United Feature Syndicate Incorporated. And that is the name of the writer of Snoopy there. Schultz. Charles, I think it is. When you're dealing with any fine timepieces, gloves should be worn or finger cuts and you don't get much finer than Snoopy. Now it looks like it's a snap back. On the back there it just says uh, base metal bezel or something, stainless steel. I don't know who makes this. There we go. Now I will say before I've even started, obviously I am not a watchmaker. You should be working in a clean environment, not on a dirty blue soldering mat. And uh, you will see plenty of mistakes in this, these videos. But this is a trying to fix video. It's just a bit of fun. You're not going to watch my video to learn how to do watchmaking. If you want that, check out the Watch Repair channel. That's a very, very, very good channel. And another channel that I particularly like watching as well is Mike from My Retro Watches. Now, success with watches. I have limited success when it comes to things like a quartz watch because you can always just change out the movement when it comes to mechanical watches i have very 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 little success but uh, i'm hoping that i may have more luck on this one right so what's happening here does this just all come out oh it just all comes out like so okay oh that's nice isn't it oh look how clean that looks now oh that is good now is that a bit of dirt on snoopy's forehead what i'm going to be using to help me is something called rodico which is this stuff here and it's uh, good for cleaning but also it really helps me take out screws and stuff like that so if it's kind of it's kind of like blue tack so let's just see if this is dirt on his head or whether oh no it's an eyebrow isn't it yeah that's his eyebrow right okay so now what we're going to do here i suppose we should start by seeing do the hands work yes they do so let's put all the hands down to this position here and i'm going to have to try I think I'm going to have to try to take them off first because otherwise I'm going to damage the hands when I start taking off the back there. 
I'm just going to put a bag over it. I think that might be it. Okay, here they are. Now, I wonder how you take this dial off because I can't see any any feet. Each one of these go down and you can see they're wrapped around here. So I suppose what we should do is, let's see if we can... Can we just take this off here? It just looks like there's a bit of gunk there, yeah. So it looks like there's a little bit of glue actually just holding that in. I suppose to stop dust and water from getting into the uh, movement. This wouldn't be waterproof anyway. Right, so here we have it. Okay, well the balance is moving freely, so why... Uh, so obviously there's some blockage that's stopping the power from the spring working its way down to the balance. So now we can take off the dial by easing out these little things here. And while I'm doing this, let's give a mention to the little group of greatness that I like to call the My Mate Vince Massive. And this month, the Massive members are Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, and the great Will Michaelis. Here it comes. Yes. Ah, oh, 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 there's more, there's more, there's more. Come on, come out. Okay, so that's the dial out. So we can put that safely to one side. Ah, oh, look at that. England. Mm, that's nice. And this bit here. Okay. Right, what have we got? What have we got? Should we zoom in a bit more? So this is the click here to stop it so you can wind it up, but so it doesn't release. So I do need to... Uh, Try to move that click out of the way so I can release the power from it. Did I say time? Oh, it's Timex. There you go. Timex. Unadjusted. Great Britain, no jewels. I mean, it's possible that maybe the, there's just wear on the, the pivots because if there's no jewels, it's metal against metal. Right, let's try to get this in some sort of holder so I can try to release... Oh, that's just come off now. I think, would that be the hour? That's the hour, isn't it? The hour wheel. Let's get into a holder so I can try to release this click. Oh, I didn't tell you what I paid for it. I flashed that up on screen right now. I can't even remember what I paid. It wasn't a huge amount of money. When we turn this here, that moves round. So I'm going to have to sort of turn it. Uh, but I need to hold on to this, don't I? I need to... I've got to think this is just going to go round like crazy. I need to keep it there. And now I need to hold on there. If I move this a little bit, there. Now, will I be able to turn this round? Is it going to let me? Oh, no, look at that. Really stiff. That should be whizzing round. Oh, there we go. There we go. I've got a bit of it. There it goes. Way too stiff though, that should be flying round. I want to make sure it's fully unwound so then I can take it apart without everything springing everywhere. Well, I'm thinking that's it. Well, I think I'm going to start from the other side. I'm looking at this here, I wouldn't even know how to take that apart there. Is it like a, is that some sort of like circlip that clips in? I don't think they've been made to be repaired. But let's start from here. It should be safe to take apart now. Now I'm going to start by just taking off this plate here and then it might give me access to uh, what's wrong with this. Right, so this is going to lift up now. Excellent. Right, so normally you'd get jewels in places like here. And because it's metal against a jewel, it's like kind of, uh, if you can imagine, 
on ice, like so it's really slippy, so there's not a lot of friction. Okay, let's have a look. So when we wind it up, we're winding up this thing here, aren't we? And then it travels all the way through. I need to take it apart a bit more to see what's going on. So that must be for the second hand, I'm thinking. I'm just going to demagnetize my tweezers. I've just noticed that's fallen out as well, so that must be for the minute hand. So at the moment, everything I touch on these tweezers, they're sticking to, yeah? So now if we demagnetize them by placing them here, holding this down, and then gently, while still holding it, lifting it off. Like so. And then, there you go. Oh, that sprung out there, so there was still tension in that there, probably because I gave it a little wind, but I think I got away with it. Normally there's a jewel on the inside of the balance. Oh, is it just hitting against that there? That's that's acting as the jewel, is it? There, that bit of metal. Oh, is this how you regulate it on this bottom bit? Yes, it is. Oh, so you can regulate it a bit, I think. Now, is this going to come out? Or not? I don't want to... Uh, oh, maybe this is all... Maybe this is all in. Maybe I, maybe I should leave that where it is. Uh... Well, we, it definitely sprung out there, so that says to me that the spring is keeping, the main spring is doing what it needs to do. I'm wondering, is it just a build-up of dirt on each of these little pivots? Maybe I just need to clean it and put it back together, because as you notice, when I put that little click down and this started to spin, did you notice to begin with it was very sluggish, but then it sped up as it went through? So maybe I just need to give it a bit of a clean where it is now, because I would like to get this working rather than take it all apart, clean every part of it, and then not be able to put it back together because uh, I don't really know how this thing works here. Yeah, this is all, this is all, I'm not getting involved in that balance. Can you see it's all part off the actual case itself? That isn't a separate balance. You've got, well, sorry, it's a separate balance, but you can't take it out by undoing a screw. They've actually pivoted it on that bit there in the metal here. Because I suppose it's cheaper to do it that way. But yeah, that definitely looks like it will regulate it. Right, because I'm so wary of balances, because that's why I always go wrong on the watches, I think I'm not going to take any of that apart there. I'm just going to give it a clean with IPA as it is here now. Because if I turn this over to, uh, to undo all those screws there, I've got a feeling that I might end up damaging that spring. So I think I'm going to leave it as it is. Right, okay, well, I can't see anything wrong with it. I can't see any broken gears or anything like that. So all I'm going to do is clean it all. So I'm going to get some IPA and just give everything a nice good clean and then try to reassemble it and see whether we have any success or not when it's back together. So this is what I'm using, isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. Right, so it's going to take a while. I'm going to clean every component apart from the case, the dial, and the hands. But everything else is going to get a clean. Okay, so I've given them all a bit of a clean, so now I'm just going to let everything dry, and then 
we'll start to reassemble it and see what happens. I'm just wondering whether it's a kind of build up of a tiny bit of dirt or wear, maybe there's a bit of metal on metal that's kind of stuck there and then every little gear has got just a tiny bit which overall has added to the resistance of the whole thing and it's overcome the power of the spring so the power of the spring isn't strong enough to make it all work its way through to get to the balance that's what i'm thinking i don't know whether a watch like this would have been oiled originally or not so i'm not sure if i should be putting a little bit of oil on i might do as i put it back together just put a little bit of oil so uh, i'll be back to this in about 10-15 minutes when it's uh, dried up i think most parts have dried now i'm just looking here can you see maybe there was some sort of build up here? Can you see there? Looks a little bit stained around there, that hole, doesn't it? Okay, but if you look here, you can see that this is definitely working because when I wind it there, you see it wants to go back, yeah? And it's nice and quick as well. So I think that's fine. When you pull that out there can you see it starts moving this in in the one here on the other side yeah and that clips over there so I suppose I could put a little bit of oil on that bit there I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start putting it a bit together uh, I wonder do you know what? I, I am gonna put a bit of oil in each pivot because it's not gonna cause any problem maybe that's what the problem was maybe the oil had gummed up after all these years so I'm gonna be using Mobius 8000 this stuff here and I'm going to be using a tiny little dropper as well. So everywhere where a pivot goes, I'm going to put a little bit of oil. And if I put too much, I can just wipe it off with the Rodico. And that needs to be in the middle there, yeah? Like so. You can see the needles, how they interact with this here now. Now, I wasn't sure whether this one goes here or here, but I can see that this needle is very small and that hole is small here. And this hole's bigger and these needles, the pivots look big. So I now know that this one goes here and the other one goes there. There we go. So now let's see if this one, let's put some oil in that little middle one there. There we go. Now, the inside of that gear there will join onto that and then the outside will join onto this here. So again, we're getting quicker and quicker. So one tiny little bit here ends up moving loads down here. Okay, that is all in place and I'm actually happy with it. So now I'm gonna to try to get this bit on here now and then I can oil it from the other side. Now this is gonna be really hard because every single pivot has to go into these holes. Got a hair there as well. I think what makes it hard here is I can't turn, normally you turn the wheels to get it to go in, but I can't turn the wheels because the balance is there. So this is, I would say, even harder than other watches to put this bit on because so many things have to line up and you can't turn the wheels because the balance is stopping it from turning. I can see that one's in, that one is, that one is, that one is. I think the balance is, but this one is not. Right, so this has come out here, isn't it? I am going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna try and do it with the eye loop. 
So uh, you, you've seen what I'm doing here. It's going to take me. It's going to take me ages. It could take me another ten goes to do that because every time you twitch, you see this just pops out of place. So let me just get these back in order and then I'll start filming again when I have the top plate about to be lined up. Right, I haven't uh, got this on yet, but I was just looking and look here. There seems to be some sort of weird gel stuff next to that pivot, and it's well and truly stuck on there. I wonder if that's what was causing it. There you go, that stuff there. I wonder if that is what caused it to uh, foul up in the first place. It feels, I'll tell you what it feels like. It feels like the bit of waterproofing that they did on the crown. A little bit of uh, hot glue from a you know, hot glue gun, that bit there. Yeah. Okay, I got it the second time. I think it's in place. I don't want to wobble it too much because if I twitch wobble that, that's going to be straight off. But I can see a pivot here, 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 here. I think I can see one there, here. And it looks like the balance is in the right position. So before I do anything else, I'm going to put those three screws back in there. And hopefully, once I get the screws in, I can then give it a little wind and see if anything happens and I can worry about putting the rest of the stuff together. This is the sort of time now where you don't want to sneeze. Okay, if I can screw this one up without messing it up. Oh, it's come out, it's come out. Yes, that's in. Right, that last time, I don't want to say it's in yet because I'm not sure, but the last time when I put it in there, what I did is I put it on with my tweezers this side, so I lined up this area first and I tried to just drop it straight down because before I was kind of moving it around to get it into position, but by moving it around, all that's going to happen is the pivots are going to hit against the metal and then move. Everything's just going to move off. Well, if you get it lined up and try to line it up perfectly before putting it down, then I presume there's more chance of uh, more chance of them going in. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's give it a little wind and see if it does anything. Come on, come on. Oh. Oh, is it going to keep going? <gasps> come on, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. No, it's stopping. I haven't put any oil in this side yet. No, nah, there's no strength there, is there? No. Uh, I don't think oil's going to make a difference. I will put some drops of oil on it, but... Mm. I would have thought that was going to work. It's definitely doing more than it did before, but that's uh, it doesn't seem to have any real strength behind it. I wonder if it's to do with where. Because looking at that pallet fork there, it, does it seem to be going down this way a little bit? Does it seem to be drooping down? I'm not too sure. Right, I'm going to try to lift this up a little bit because it's uh, to me it looks a little bit bent. It's kicked in there now, isn't it? 
Do you know, I wonder if that top bit, you see the top bit, I wonder if that was forced downwards, then it's going to be putting more pressure, that's going to be causing friction against the top. Well, I wonder, is it wear against here? Hold on. Yeah, so the top feels quite solid, but there's definitely wear on the bottom, this side here. But it's wanting to go now. Isn't it? Let's try it in a few other positions. Well, it's it's given it something now. Okay, now it's been about five minutes later. It's still ticking. Amazingly, I got myself one of these. I've been wanting one for ages and I've been putting it off thinking, well, I'm never gonna really use it. But you know what? I treated myself to it. Look at that, I'm amazed. Yes, it is a minute and a half fast a day. But those two, I'm not saying it's a good trace, and I know a professional would look at that and be like, that's awful. But remember, this watch probably didn't have a great trace when it was new anyway. But the fact is, it's within a minute and a half a day. Well, there you go, it's dropped down to a minute now. I know it is just in one position. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to adjust this little regulator just to see what difference that makes. We need to make it slower. So we need to make the balance spring longer, don't we? So we're fixed into it here with the metal little peg. So I need to move this along this way. So let's just move it there. And by doing that a millimeter, you can see now I've made that balance spring uh, a millimeter longer because it's fixed on this bit of metal here. So now let's zoom out. And obviously I'd have to go the other way if I wanted to quicken it up. And now we've gone down to, what have we gone down to? Minus 32 and it's 18,000 beats. Oh, and look at my trace now. Can you see my trace now is going, hold on, where are we going? Let me turn it off. Do it again. 18,000, let me find out how many seconds, how many, how many beats that is ticking a second. So if it was six times a second, it would be six times 60 times 60 is 21,000. So uh, let's try five times 60 times 60, 18. So it's actually beating five times a second. So you know, with, this is gonna have a sweeping second hand, which is always nice. It's not ticking like a quartz clock, it's sweeping round. So it's actually ticking five times a second. So it's not really sweeping, it just looks sweeping. Now, if you had a better watch, it might be, for example, 28,800 beats, and that work might be beating eight times a second. Eight times 60 times 60. So that would be eight times a second. And I think some watches can even go higher than that. But there you go, look at that trace now. Can you see, yes, it's up and down. The beat error is 3.8 milliseconds, which I presume is awfully high, and the amplitude seems quite low. But it is a, it's doing, it's gonna work in this position anyway. 22 seconds down a day, eight seconds up. I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of oil on here. Right now. Okay, so that turns when you do that. Right now, let's put the next one on. So that's gonna be for the minute hand. And this one's gonna be for the hour hand. And now we have to put this cover back on. Yeah, that's it there, through those little holes. Right, let's fold those bits back over. And uh, yeah, then we've got to get the hands on.
Right, so it's still ticking at the moment. So now let's try to get these hands back on. Just going to use some little pushes to try and get it back on. I think that looks about right. A lot of play in it, but I think it's okay. Let's see if it's still ticking. Yes, it is. Right now, we've got to get the second hand on. I like this second hand because I love red second hands. Oh, yes. Go on, Snoopy. Ooh, oh, yes, good dog. Oh, look at that. So it's moving five times a second. So between here and five and six, it's moving 25 ticks. Oh, isn't that lovely? It's pretty stiff to move around. Right, so I've got my thumb on the balance wheel and now it goes again. Yeah, off it goes. Brilliant, right, okay, what we have to do now is concentrate on trying to clean in, cleaning up the uh, glass because the glass is very scratched. You can see how nice the dial looks when it's out because it's it's perfect, but when, it's, when you're looking at it through the glass, it just looks really bad. So you can see all the scratches there. Yeah, and some are very deep like that, so I won't be able to get rid of that, but I might be able to get rid of the scratches. And this is, uh, let me just make sure that this is acrylic. Yeah, that noise is making there, so that says to me that that's acrylic. Right, so I'm going to be using some poly watch on here. I'm getting low, so it's kind of dribbling out a load of uh, liquid as well as the white stuff. But hopefully it will be okay. Right, let's see if that's any better. It's better, but you can still see there's some real deep ones going on there. So I'm going to give it quite a few more goes. Okay, so that's a little bit better, still for the scratches, but you can see there's not quite as many as there was before. Right, let's uh, pop this back in here. And I should have my gloves on, but I've taken them off now. I'm only popping this in here anyway. That's there now, it's still ticking away, and also keeping time as well, because I've just done it against my watch here, and it appears to be keeping up with it. So now we have to pop this back on. Like that. And now, pop this in. There we go, right, that's on there now. And there he is ticking away. Right, so obviously this was the strap that came with it, but there's no way that that's in a, well, I say no way. Really, I should look online first of all to see if there's any old pictures of it, but I'm thinking a white one would go better on it. Now, I haven't got the right size strap, but let's just 
give it a quick glimpse and see what it uh, what it looks like if it looks nicer or not. Right, so I think that white suits it more than black. Or I mean, would red go with it? I think the white just brings out the blue more. So just for the purpose of finishing up the video, because this is going to take uh, normally when I to get a strap like this, I would just get a cheap one off eBay. So it would probably take about a week to arrive. But you can get them for just a couple of pounds. They're not expensive. So uh, I think I'm going to put this one on just to finish up the video. We'll pop it back on the machine and uh, have a nice close look at it. OK, so here we have it dialed up. And as you can see, it's uh, what is it? Minus 30 seconds a day, which is which is OK. But we've got a lovely mountainous range here, which it, <laughs> it shouldn't be. It should just be a nice straight line across. I'll tell you what, let me put on this watch here. And then, although this watch hasn't been serviced since I bought it, it should still be better. Again, all right, there we go. So you can see that that's doing eight beats per second. Oh, look at that. Now that's what it should look like, plus two seconds a day. You can see that the, between the tick and the tock, the two lines are almost together. So the beat error is near enough non-existent. Good watch, isn't it? So you can see now how bad the Snoopy one is. But you need to remember that the, the insides of these watches, you can't compare the difference between them anyway. Because one is ridiculously cheap and essentially a toy. And uh, one is a piece of art. Right, here we go. I still like this though, a lot. Okay, so this is the Traces Now drawing here. So look at that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. It's minus 25-ish minus seconds. So it looks to be going about from one-ish minutes slow to one-ish minutes fast, which is, which is fine by me. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take that as a success. So it's a few days later now, and as you can see, I've got myself a nice blue strap for it, and it really sets it off nicely. And amazingly, the timekeeping, I would say, is quite good so I've wound it every single day it definitely lasts at least 24 hours I haven't let it go longer than that and check out I haven't changed the time and look three o'clock three o'clock so uh, I mean I haven't timed it seconds wise but it definitely does its job at telling the time. So this came out in 1969 and ran throughout the 1970s. You also had a dancing Snoopy and also a tennis player Snoopy as well and they came in different colours. What's interesting is the date on this program down here is March the 28th 1970 which is around the date of this watch here so I think between the watch and the news of the world and the three programs I'm really happy with this purchase here now that I've got the blue strap on it I think it looks amazing and what's also interesting is Timex have still got the collaboration with Snoopy going so 2020 was the 70th anniversary of peanuts and they brought out a load of Snoopy watches again so I'm really, I don't know why, I really like it. Obviously I can't wear it, but it just looks, I don't, I don't know what it is. I really like the look of it. I think it's probably because it wasn't working and now it's working again. It just makes it more uh, more appealing. And also, in case you're interested in an upcoming video, look what I bought myself on eBay. Check this out. New in box, but not working. A Popeye watch, but this is going to be a quartz watch. But... Uh, yeah, 1987, this one here. So yeah, hopefully I'll do that one in the next month or so. So that is it for this video. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I know watches are not everybody's cup of tea, but you've got to admit, even if you're not into watches, just having something, the mechanical little heart ticking away in here is just nice. And considering it's a cheap inside, you can see it's doing its job of keeping time very, very well. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. If you did too, give it a thumbs up and I will see you very shortly. Take care, everyone.